Meanwhile, a U.S.-based Nigerian, Imano Ugegbe, has established contact with Leah's family, who, according to him, confirmed that it was their doctor's voice. Now, joining us via Skype is Imano Ugegbe. Welcome to PTV tonight, Emmanuel. Now, as someone who has been in the forefront of the agitation for Lua Shaibu's release, what was your first reaction on listening to this Proof of Life audio? Well, uh, before now, we all have to take head of us. We have all had our release. So it was important for us to update the audio. And I spoke to they confirmed that that and that was a source of joy, of joy also. Okay, now, okay, we, now saw we saw from, from your, your earlier statements, statements that you have reached out to the family. Would you give us a sense of the mood, you know, having heard of this proof of life video, what the family's mood was like? Well, well the mother, the mother was understandably, seeing the image of her daughter, yeah. Yeah. And knowing that 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 moment was very very important. What fortunately, yeah, yeah, younger, younger brother was there to control. I also, I also called her, her. At, at least, least we will do that. that, that, yeah, that, that. Now, now what has happened? Parents, listen. So that they can be supported to one another. After talking to she has the plan trying and Okay, now we understand that your group is supporting Leah's family emotionally. You've been there for the family. Could you tell us more about that? Well, within the of the abduction, we sent the in February, we identified a figure as and we began to provide needy. Obviously, when all the other guys and Leah was not, we now realize for a long time for that show. So, working with uh, on the we can have uh, uh, we have tried to different support family. I think that now that it has come out both to say that we have family, it's incumbent on all of us who stands up because there's no compulsion in plan to come together for this family, whose child, whose child held uh, because of the Okay, now, could you tell us how you arrived at $3 a day? Well, I mean, I wish we could do more, but in my uh, calculation, dollars a day is approximately a thousand. So I am making a commitment to provide a thousand for each day that we are a prisoner. At this point, we a prisoner for what a day. That is 200. If we can get 100 Nigerians who will make a play of a thousand a day for each day that um, we are uh, in prison, we will be able to change the lives family for good. Now, how are you so sure about this? How am I sure of what? On the fact that she didn't read a script, like it wasn't a, a script that she read out that was given to her. Well, here's the the abduction was a bit unusual. Because Boko Haram took us and then returned them home while four girls are still missing four years afterwards. And we're talking about a third plus. 
So there are definitely auspicious circumstances. What is particularly troubling is that it is the fact of this security that negotiated the treaty, not the Swiss government and the Red Cross, but the Chibok abroad. And so now we hear reports that ransoms were paid according to the United States of the federal government. So this is why we're calling for an independent investigation into the truth of what happened, because it may have reached fair. However, that said, regardless of what is going on, the fact remains that uh, Leah has not and even if this is Hollywood or the political scenario, we want to leave back. Now, what other demands are you making on Leah Sharibu's rehabilitation after eventual release? Well, certainly, he has to undergo a comprehensive medical evaluation. But we want to show that when he returns, he is not held up by the federal government uh, who held the federal prison for so, for so long and who tried to force him, like Amina, back into this, even though she was already Christian before she was up. So we want Leah to be properly compensated because it is the fault of the government that she was abducted from the custody of the government is the first place. It is also a failure of the government to have secured life of children in schools in North Nigeria four years after the court. So we want to ensure that the compensates her and, and, and they have full access for religion and freedom of with her family when she Okay, now you also have some demands on the former DSSDG Lawal Dara. How does he get into the picture? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Allegation that the runs was for that ended up being diverted. It is important that the federal government interrogates him and investigate to show whether money was paid, contrary to their data, how much was paid, and how much was paid for uh, the ransom. Because unfortunately, we think that the terrorism has become a federal industry for the security apparatus this Nigeria. Quite one of the custodians of the Chibok girls. Now tell us more about them, the progression. Tell you about what? Chibok girls. You were one of the custodians, you know, quite yeah. sort of, of the Chibok girls. Could you tell us more, you know, about their progression right now? Yes. yes. Well, Chibok girls uh, who are brought to the US are in various uh, stages of ed education. The ones who uh, I spoke and who were not taken by the Nigerian government have all completed their uh, are in various universities across now. All the longer that my sponsor, the girls who were the government, whoever not the very academic pursuit, I speak to you. None of them are taking university programs. One of them even dropped out of school altogether. Uh, her name is Kat. She's not in school. So even their mates in Nigeria have uh, surpassed them in many respects. Some of the Chibok who in jobs have passed success with their GCE and have even come to the US to go to school. But the ones who were taken by the federal government, uh, most of them do not have their high school uh, diploma. Okay.
too. Could you tell us where funds, you know, were raised to help in this um, various schools and programs that they have been set up with? Well, I can tell you point that when the federal government uh, took over girls, they claimed that in the they, they spent over dollars on the five girls. I can tell you that of the 12 victims that I sponsored in the US, including the 10 girls, we, we never had up to 5% of what the federal and others claimed spent on them. But for the glory of God, we have been able to uh, show results in the sense that these young girls have been successful in obtaining their and then the first uh, intervention has produced much behavior. And I, as Bible says, by that, I know them. How the federal government, who claim to have spent such an amount of money and fails, uh, produce faith, while uh, individuals and humanitarians who come in without the might of the without the resources of the government and impact, is uh, is what everyone in Nigeria, uh, their government. Let me actually point out that one girl that sponsored, not from Chibok, is the orphan of a who was killed by Boko Haram. She graduated recently with an associate in science, magna cum laude. So none of the girls in America today, one year before her, reached the level that who came one year has attained. Yes. This is quite commendable. Thanks for that review. And now, finally, could you tell us your relationship with the Bring Back Our Girls movement? Well, I don't know if you are aware, but I'm a rights lawyer. Uh, I have worked on human rights for over 25 years. Uh, uh, week was the 22nd of human rights. So, uh, the big movement is one of the Cross causes that I have joined and uh, over. So uh, earlier this year, I was uh, at the where we were called on for the inclusion and one of two other. Okay, thank you so much, Imana Lugwegwe, for being on PTV tonight. Thank you. And that was the